long hair problems waking up. Today might be the day I actually sell my car because I did put an ad on Craigslist and my phone last night was just blowing up, blowing up, blowing up from uh, people. A lot of these people wanted ridiculous, uh, ridiculous prices. I'll give you $750, i will give you $500 cash. Uh, no, I'm not paying, I'm not taking your $500 cash. And they're like, come on, dog. $500, your car's in bad condition. No. Only one kid hit me up. I think it was like a college kid asking if he could buy it for like uh, almost close price to what I'm asking for. And I said yes. And um, sometime today, I guess he's going to call me and we're going to work this out. And we're going to um, fill out the little paperwork that you need. Take my little license plate off the car. And my car is going bye-bye. But we'll see what happens um, in a little bit when a dude comes to my house. If he wants to buy it for the price that he's asking for. But this vlog is all about me selling my car. And you guys might be wondering. And say don't don't sell your Toyota Celica. Don't. It's a great car. Well to be honest. I don't want to do it. But I don't have that extra money to put into it. That's going to uh, fix it up. So. And. Talking to certain people like mechanics, they're like, well, if you if you put the money into it and it gets it working right, what happens if something else happens? You're just throwing money into something. They're, all I know is their previous owner never done, never did anything to this car for like 120,000 miles. There was no service. There was no nothing. So that's why this car needs to go to somebody else who uh, has the uh, funds or the means to fix it up or their mechanic. What's up, beautiful, what's up, beautiful people? This is the last time, probably, I, uh, drive the Celica and see the Celica because, um, I just got an offer for this car for, like, 1400 bucks. so, uh, I'm gonna drive it to where the guy wants to meet at and then hope to sell it. Do I love the Celica? I definitely do. I think it's a awesome looking ride i think it's one of the most uh iconic looking rides you know when you look at that it looks more modernized than some cars nowadays it still looks like it could be made in like the last five years my only problem is i don't have the money to put into the ride to make it ride beautifully anymore like it did when it came from the factory so as always guys i'll let you guys know if, it, if the guy takes it or he doesn't What's up YouTube? Um, I finally did it. I sold my car to someone who was knowledgeable in cars and the guy seemed like he really liked the car because he said he previously had a uh, Toyota uh, Celica, uh, like a 2000 model, but it's not like he blew his engine up as well so he's looking for something else I guess he could put money into and fix up and um, when we were riding down the road because he really wanted to test it. He was, he hit 90 miles an hour on this little surface road. He's like, bah, bah. he goes, you know, my Celica used to be faster than yours. I'm like, well, your Celica didn't have as much problems as mine did. That's why it's not uh, doing the speeds and the pickup that your car did. But at the end of the day, 
It's not, uh, it's out of my hands, but I definitely say it's a bittersweet. It's a very bittersweet. And what I mean by it's a bittersweet is, do I love the car? Yeah. Do I think it's a phenomenal ride? Yeah. I definitely love riding and I definitely feel comfortable. And I love how, uh, kind of how like small it is because I'm a small guy and it feels like it fits me perfectly. That ride definitely fits me perfectly. And I enjoyed driving it and riding it and whatever. And he goes, he's like, you never took it on the freeway and just flew down the freeway like a hunter. I'm like, nah, man, I, I ride, I don't ride cars hard. I definitely don't. And especially because I knew this car was an older car and I knew there were some problems with it. I'm not going to ride it hard. But he said with a little bit of uh, tender care that this car will be back on the street in no time looking nice and looking right. And I, I commend somebody who has the uh, income and the funds to actually make a car uh, the way it's supposed to be. If I had the funds to make this car looking right and looking nice, I definitely would have put the time into doing it. But I just couldn't uh, uh, see myself doing that as a dude who's currently not working now and someone who is in the uh, process of doing it. So... Um, if you guys want to know how much I sold it for, uh, you can definitely uh, uh, hit me up on Facebook. But I'm not going to put it in this uh, video because I don't want to say you. I don't want you guys to say, "Well, you got ripped off." I don't want you guys to say, "Well, that's how much you sold it for." Well, yeah, I didn't sell it for like an extreme amount. But but like I said, it is a bittersweet because when you love something uh, so much that you have to let it go, it's kind of like maybe doing like a long distance relationship kind of and you really love seeing that person. And you're really happy to see them for a very long time, and you're seeing them for like two weeks. And then out of nowhere, they have to get on a plane and go back to where they live or they have to get in their car and travel back to their city or town or state. It's kind of like the same kind of thing because you have that bittersweet feeling that you're like, I love this thing. I want to hold on to it. I want to keep it. I wish I can keep it. But you know, your deep down gut's telling you it's better to let it go. So when you uh, find something else, it might be a better uh, thing long term than buying something and keeping something that maybe short term you're just throwing money and throwing money and throwing money into that will never end up being the ride that you thought it would be but like i said the guy uh was knowledgeable of cars uh he seemed uh, very passionate about having it and uh he said with a, he he knows people that could uh do it for a relatively cheap price so uh with that being said uh i guess i will uh, definitely uh talk to you guys in the uh next one it's just a Bittersweet feeling, man. It's it's kind of like uh, when you move. It's kind of like it makes you feel like when you move from like one house to another, from one state to another. It's kind of like you're back at the bottom. Like you're learn, you're you're getting used to something else. You have to enjoy that other thing. But uh, if you guys have never sold a car, you don't know how the feel is. But when you buy a new car, you know how the feel is of buying that car, enjoying that car, and. Uh, and you might want to modify. I'm not a really a big modifying uh, type person, but I just wanted to uh, let you guys know what is going on with the Celica. You're not going to see the Celica on this channel anymore, baby. Uh, maybe sometime later in life will I ever get a Celica again? I definitely could. But the problem with that is I would definitely have to make sure uh, that whoever had it beforehand definitely took a hell of a lot of care to it because... I love the way Toyota Celicas look. I definitely love the way they ride. And I definitely love the way they look modernized. They definitely look like they could have been made in 2017. So as always, I'm Trevor and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.